Welcome to ValueML AI Expo 2021 CXO Insights Track. We would like to first thank our sponsors, Platinum sponsors, Edge Impulse and Habana Intel AI, Gold sponsors, FNX, Lattice, MindBody, and Think Silicon. A couple of logistical items, please make sure to submit your question through Q&A chat box on Whova app. And also please make sure to click on the Q&A sub session at the bottom of this page on Whova app to join the live Q&A after this video recording. Our first keynote speaker is Sheree Ganesan. She is head of software products at Habana Labs to talk about delivering deep learning with Habana Gaudi. Over to you, Sherry. Hi, I'm Sri Ganesan, Head of Software Products at Habana Labs, an Intel company. Today, I want to tell you how Habana's Gaudi AI processors are driving large leaps in efficiency in training deep learning models. Clearly, there is a large and growing demand for deep learning training. Um, more and more businesses are finding ways to leverage their data that they have into their applications uh, by training deep learning models. And these models are getting bigger and more complex in the drive to improve accuracy and usefulness. And training these models is, is done with many, many iterations on a lot of data. A recent IDC study indicates that this is happening on a weekly basis and many customers are retraining their models daily or even hourly. All this is driving an exponential consumption in the compute for AI training. And this means increasing cost of operations. So this cost has become a real limiter for the growth of our industry and for those who can afford AI. Today's talk is a lot about efficiency because cost to train is reported as one of the biggest barriers to implementing AI. 56% of respondents in a recent IDC study are saying that their single most significant challenge to implementing AI ML solutions is cost. So as an industry, our challenge is how do we give customers access to cost-effective AI training? This is where the Gaudi AI processor comes in because Habana was founded and Gaudi was developed with the mission to improve efficiency in AI compute. Gaudi was architected from the ground up for training efficiency in the cloud and the data center. It's based on a heterogeneous compute architecture purpose built for accelerating training. It has a configurable centralized gem engine and fully programmable tensor processor cores. There are eight of them. Uh, it has a software managed memory architecture. We have 32 mm -hmm. gigabits of HPM. We have local shared memory and memory in the TPCs, each of the TPCs. Um, and finally, Gaudi is one of the first AI processors to integrate on chip 10 ports of 100 gigabit Ethernet Rocky for scaling and across multiple Gaudi devices. In the, other in the other aspect, I think the design principle has been around flexibility and ease of migration. This is how developers can take advantage of the goodness of the hardware and uh, benefit from, from the cost efficiency. So ease of use, our software stack, Synapse AI, is integrated with TensorFlow and PyTorch, and a minimal set of code changes are required to get started with Gaudi. Synapse AI then maps the topology onto the Gaudi devices. So developers can enjoy the same abstraction that they are accustomed to today. And in terms of those who use custom kernels and develop custom kernels to extract the best performance, we offer the Synapse AI TPC SDK, which will allow users to write their own custom kernels to target to our TPC on the Gaudi devices. We have a very rich kernel library, which is performance optimized for Gaudi. So we expect that 
majority of the operators and use cases would be covered by these rich kernel libraries that we have, and that there is a small number of customers who would be developing these custom kernels to extract more performance. And then the 32 gigabits of HPM is very similar to GPUs and is yet another uh, ease of use factor where you're spending lesser effort to port models over to Gaudi because it would, if it fits on a GPU memory, it is likely to fit on the Gaudi memory. Gaudi is also the industry's first uh, AI processor where we've natively integrated 10 ports of 100 gigabit Ethernet onto every Gaudi device. This is incredibly critical because uh, it, it is scaling efficiency that is important for distributed training. Now we did this to eliminate networking bottlenecks and by using standard internet, uh, both for the connections within the server and across uh, nodes. So you're basically using the same uh, ethernet protocols uh, to scale across multiple Gaudi devices uh, in a single node and multi-node. That allows you to eliminate lock-in with, with any proprietary interfaces. And the fact that it is integrated on DAI allows you to lower the system cost and power because there are fewer discrete components being used. This is a picture that shows a typical node that has, uh, for example, it's in our micro X12 server. Um, it integrates eight Gaudi OCP OEM cards and utilizes the 10 ports of uh, interconnects. Each Gaudi is connected to seven other Gaudi devices. Um, so that leaves out of the 10 ports, three ports that are not, uh, that are for scaling outside the server and there are eight of them. So you have 24 uh, 100 gigabit Ethernet um, RDMA or Aki ports for scale out. And, um, the seven, uh, the eight Gaudis are connected all to all non-blocking uh, within that single node. And largely that leaves the PCIe ports for the external host CPU traffic. Now this architecture also makes it very easy to scale into a rack or a cluster by simply leveraging the scaling interfaces uh, and connecting to an ethernet data switch and you can build a pod of any size. Here are some results that we've reported for uh, the ResNet 50 model. Uh, an eight Gaudi server delivers 12,900 images per second in training throughput and scales nearly line linearly. We've, we've shown you results uh, for 1, 8, 16, and 32 Gaudis here. And similarly, you can see here results for BERT large training on single and eight Gaudis. Um, we have a, a lot of models that are available and Performance information is updated on our uh, developer website regularly with every Synapse AI release, we update the performance numbers and, and that's, that, that's uh, the one-stop shop for the performance data. Um, with this, I'm gonna switch to a little bit of um, dis discussion on, on our software stack. We've talked about the Synapse AI software suite and, and the design principles uh, around uh, enabling uh, ease of use and performance. Um, this is extremely critical because to extract the goodness of the soft, uh, of the hardware, we have to have a software stuff that allows the developers to, to lower the barrier for, for uh, migrating models and make it easy to start using the, um, the hardware underneath. So Synapse AI, like I said, is integrated with two popular frameworks, TensorFlow and PyTorch and users can find a variety of popular reference models on our GitHub. Uh, these include image classification, object detection, uh, segmentation, natural language processing. Uh, there is uh, a lot of other developer resources. We'll talk a little bit about it a little later, uh, where, where a lot of the uh, onboarding and, and uh, enabling content is available for, for developers to get, uh, get started with Gaudi. Uh, a little bit on the picture on the right, uh, just to share uh, about the software stack itself. Um, the framework integration layer is, is, is this layer that connects to the, the TensorFlow and PyTorch frameworks. Um, and then it, it extracts the subgraph from the, uh, the framework computation graph that's handed over to the Synapse AI graph compiler and runtime. 
uh, which generates the optimized binary recipe that that kind that is scheduled for execution on a Gaudi. Uh, we have, like like I said before, the rich TPC kernel library, which is performance optimized, and the graph compiler leverages these kernels uh, while building out that optimized recipe. We also have the Habana communication library, which is meant for users uh, for for um, uh, communicating across the Gaudi devices within a single node as well as uh, multi-node. And um, on the on the right, you'll see the TPC programming tools and the debug and and uh, profiling tools that we offer. So the TPC programming tools are used for building that custom kernel library we just talked about a little while ago. Uh, this allows users to then augment the existing Habana kernel library to kind of have a more richer uh, kernel library for performance. And debug and profiling is across the full stack, both for TensorFlow and PyTorch, it allows you to visualize uh, with the bottlenecks in your code. It allows you to debug and understand uh, where, where issues might be that you need to focus on to improve uh, either the functionality or performance of your code. Let's take a quick look um, under the hood to see how Synapse AI works with TensorFlow. So Synapse AI receives the computation graph from the framework. It identifies the subgraphs which uh, can be accelerated on the Gaudi devices. And these are highlighted in blue, and uh, the yellow nodes are the operators and, and a portion of the graph that uh, cannot be accelerated by Gaudi and it runs on the CPU. Then the original graph is modified to replace these subgraphs with an encapsulated node. The framework runtime schedules, um, executes this modified graph, and um, for each encapsulated node, then Synapse AI receives that subgraph, does the optimizations, and generates the optimized binary code that then runs on Gaudi. Most of this is, is invisible to the end user because they are working at the level of TensorFlow and PyTorch in the framework. Um, most, and most of the work is done by Synapse AI under the hood. So what does it take to get started with Gaudi? So this is an example on the left uh, of a very simple uh, MNIST model. And you can see that uh, there are two lines of code in bolds that highlight what is required to get the bare minimum required to get started with Gaudi. We would load the Habana libraries needed to use Gaudi as an, uh, a device uh, in the framework. And once these are loaded, uh, the, the HPU or the Habana processing unit, which is uh, 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 a code for Gaudi in, in TensorFlow gets registered and is prioritized over the CPU. So if there's an operator that's available for both CPU and HPU, that operator gets to uh, run on the HPU. If that's not supported on the HPU, it would simply run on the CPU. So now we will take a few moments to uh, talk about the developer resources. This is an extremely critical component in enabling the, the developer community and easing the adoption of uh, new hardware uh, and a software stack so that they can take advantage of the benefits of, of the uh, architecture. So we believe that just the designing that hardware is actually a small portion and, and a majority of our effort is, is required uh, in enabling these end users. And we do spend a lot of energy on, on making sure we are developing the right content and we're, we would love to have the developer community engage with us and help us shape this uh, even better. Uh, the developer.habana.ai is our hub for developers and, and um, uh, end users where they can find um, a lot of information to just get started. It's it's information on, on how do you set up and install the software, where to find our reference models, where to find the documentation, uh, and all kinds of uh, uh, how-to content. And there's also a forum for the uh, developer community where you can come in and ask questions. And we're hoping to build a vibrant community. Uh, we will have Habana experts also available to answer questions and support that community. In the, in the resources section, we've got uh, how-to guides, videos, tutorials. Um, uh, these are all available uh, for, uh, for data scientists. And for IT and system admins, we have uh, guides on setting up and managing this, the Gaudi servers and the compute infrastructure. 
On Habana's developer documentation, uh, you will find uh, a lot of information on, on at, at various levels. Uh, overview of our software stack and our architecture, um, user guides for Synapse AI, TensorFlow and PyTorch user guides, uh, programming user guide for the TPC, uh, all kinds of API reference guides, um, uh, how-to guides and migration guides for, for model migration and optimization, and so on. Habana GitHub uh, is another uh, major stop for developers. Uh, it contains a lot of uh, repositories with examples, scripts, and instruction manuals. The uh, setup and installation repository contains guidance on how to set up the environment with Gaudi firmware and drivers, install the Synapse AI software stack, uh, the TensorFlow and PyTorch container images, and so on. Our reference models repository contains examples of deep learning models that the Habana team has ported over to Gaudi, and it comes with all the model scripts and instructions on how to run these models. There's a custom kernel example library that uh, repository uh, that uh, describes how to create custom kernels and use them in a, in a real life example. And a variety of other uh, tutorials and examples are also available on our GitHub. So developers can uh, pick up some of these reference models from our GitHub repository and immediately implement common use cases for image classification, object detection, natural language processing. Uh, there are a few of these uh, uh, examples that we have uh, provided of, of the, the domains where this is being used, right? So defect detection in manufacturing or in retail, uh, there are use cases in, um, in medical imaging. So these can be immediately applied in, in, in several of these scenarios. And we have some, um, we'll be creating more content on, on also documenting some of these uh, use cases. The list of reference models and the roadmap uh, is available also on our GitHub. We plan to continuously expand our operator coverage and model coverage, and we would like to have our developer community provide feedback and influence how we evolve our roadmap here. Now we will switch to um, where can you get uh, uh, solutions powered by Gaudi, whether it's the cloud or the data center. So back in December, um, AWS announced they were working on introducing a Gaudi-based uh, EC2 instance, and that they expect this will offer up to 40% uh, price performance improvement over their current GPU instances. This would be the first non-GPU instance uh, which will be available on AWS. Um, before you ask any questions, uh, I will not provide an update uh, on this effort here. Uh, please refer to AWS for any update. In terms of the, uh, what to expect from these Gaudi-based EC2 instances, developers and users can benefit from the full stack of uh, EC2 services, uh, including optimized deep learning armies and deep learning containers for Gaudi, uh, integration with uh, ECS and EKS orchestration. Um, for those who prefer a managed service, uh, there will be integration with Amazon SageMaker, and of course, efficient scaling across multiple Gaudi-based EC2 instances. Gaudi is also available on-premise. Um, Recently, San Diego Supercomputing Center announced that the Voyager supercomputer that will go into service this fall, and this supercomputer is uh, based on the Supermicro Gaudi servers. Um, there are 336 Gaudi AI processors in that cluster, and they leverage the native integration of Rocky that Gaudi offers. Um, and every every server is connects the the twenty ports of uh, twenty four ports of hundred gigabit Ethernet uh, to a dedicated uh, data switch, uh, offering a very low cost and high performance interconnect for scaling. Uh, we're very excited to be partnering with the San Diego Supercomputing Center as they uh, open up this cluster for uh, um, AI research across a range of science and engineering domains. And we're looking forward to having state-of-the-art research uh, done by a lot of the universities uh, on our uh, Gaudi uh, cluster. A little bit about the Supermicro X12 server. Uh, this we talked. It's very similar to the picture we we uh, looked at of of the training node. It has eight uh, Gaudi uh, OAM cards, and it has uh, a uh, integrates a third-gen Xeon scalable processors. 
it exposes all the rocky ports for scale out and and it's very easy then for building racks and clusters for AI training. Um, and this server is available. Uh, more information is available on the Supermicro website. And uh, if you're interested in deploying these, you should contact Supermicro for availability and pricing. So now we'll switch to a, a, a brief case study uh, where we partner with Risk Fuel, uh, which is a fintech company, uh, on on uh, looking into the the benefits that Habana Gaudi can bring them. Risk Fuel serves the financial training market and provides real-time valuations and risk sensitivities. And banks and insurance companies use their product to value and manage their financial instrument, the portfolio of financial instruments. Uh, the traditional approach to solve these complex valuation models is slow and noisy and compute intensive. And Risk Fuel's innovation is the use of AI to dramatically accelerate these calculations. So they leverage this slow solver to generate training data, and then they use the synthetic data to train deep learning uh, models, and then um, accelerate uh, the, the solution space uh, very rapidly with these uh, AI-based uh, uh, software. Um, these exotic derivatives and the calculations for these require uh, exotic architectures. Uh, one of the things that we looked at for our study was uh, a resonant inspired architecture. Um, there was another aspect that the risk field team was interested in uh, exploiting, which was the underlying symmetries and, and trying to use customized weight sharing. And one problem that they uh, had was that many of the non-standard layers here are not optimized. And this tends to slow down training quite a bit and, and obviously directly adds to the cost of, uh, of operation. So we partnered uh, with Risk Fuel on exploring how they can benefit from the cost efficient training offered by, uh, by Gaudi. Um, they focused on usability and performance as two vectors to, to look into. Uh, their experiments were done on an eight Gaudi server. Um, on the usability front, they found it easy to get started with Gaudi on TensorFlow. It did indeed take only a few lines of code to do that. Uh, they were also uh, uh, using the Synapse AI profiler to get insights into the performance bottlenecks in their model, um, especially using the visualization capabilities. And uh, they found they were able to train their ResNet-inspired models as fast as feed forward networks. And the lower cost of operation has now opened the door for them to start exploring uh, Gaudi as an opportunity to exploit this underlying symmetry and, and do some of these customized weight sharing experiments. So uh, overall, this was the, the experience that they had. Um, I will wrap up this case study with a testimonial from the risk fuel team on the cost performance benefit of Gaudi. Uh, and basically the access to more affordable training with Gaudi in turn helps them increase their model accuracy and then pass on the resulting benefits to their end users. So to recap, um, we talked about how cost to train is a significant barrier for AI adoption for businesses and how Gaudi's purpose-built AI processor, uh, uh, AI processor and, and the Synapse AI software suite are, are lowering that barrier. But we are just at the beginning of that journey and, and our engineers are, are focused on uh, expanding the capabilities in our software stack to make it as easy as possible to use and leverage that benefit from these AI processors. And in parallel, we're also preparing for Gaudi 2. And Gaudi 2 takes the Gaudi architecture from 16 nanometer to 7 nanometer, further improving the price performance for, for the benefit of our end customers and leveraging that ecosystem that we're building today with Gaudi. We hope you will join us on our journey to democratize AI with affordable training. Uh, and thank you for taking the time today. Ready now we we'll start the um, live Q&A with our speaker. Um, so I received a question from the from Timo. Um, are these Gaudis available on AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud services? 
Yeah, so uh, on AWS, of course, and we talked about it in the presentation, it's coming soon. Um, you should reach out to AWS about exactly when. Um, but it's a good question on Microsoft and Google. I can't comment on their on their uh, plans, so you should definitely reach out to uh, Microsoft and Google directly uh, about when they can uh, offer Gaudi. Okay, great. Um, just a general question. Habana was acquired by Intel in late 2019. How's that going? It's going great, actually. So we're uh, set up as an independent business unit. So there's uh, a lot of that startup DNA still part of the company. And we're leveraging all of the scale and resources at Intel. And of course, accessing the uh, ecosystem and customer partnerships that Intel has. So it's been going really well. Great. Um, what's the best application to use for Gaudi? Good question. So we've spent a lot of time on optimizing our software, path, like the, the specific domains we've gone after our vision and uh, language. Uh, so you'll see a lot of our models are optimized for um, uh, image processing, image classification, object detection, and natural language uh, processing. Um, we're showing significant price performance benefit in these domains, and we're continuing to evolve uh, to other, other domains and other application areas. And we would love to hear from the community on what's uh, of value so we can, we can keep improving in those areas. So, um, Great. So another question, how many Gaudi cars can be scaled together in one cluster? So we've, uh, I mean, there's the Voyager cluster as an example. They have 336 Gaudis uh, in our own data center. We have up to a thousand Gaudis. So there's really not like a constraint in terms of how many Gaudis can be hooked up into a cluster. Um, so it's, it's basically based on standard Ethernet protocols and, and using data switches. So you can scale to a fairly large number of Gaudis, uh, hundreds and hundreds of Gaudis easily. Great. Um... Another question we have here, how does Habana plan on uh, further building its developer ecosystem? You touched on the GitHub and the community you have. So what are your right. future plans? So a lot of the initial effort was obviously on the foundational capabilities and, and making sure our, our software stack was uh, enabled for a variety of uh, uh, operators in the framework and model coverage. Uh, we have just started working with some of the uh, ecosystem, software ecosystem partners. Um, in, the, in the coming months, you'll hear more about some of our partnerships and how we're trying to build out that developer ecosystem through the partnerships. And of course, we're going to continue to hear and, and listen to the community through all of the forums we've talked about uh, and, and engage with them and, and drive that uh, prioritization of which ones that, that are of uh, more interest and then co continue to collaborate with these partners over time. In the next few months, we'll, we'll share more. Great, uh, thank you. I'm looking at the questions. Uh, please submit your questions in Q&A chat. Um, we have, so one of my questions again, so we had like one question from the audience. Uh, will Gaudi be, um, sorry, I already asked that question. Um, so just a general, like the, um, the plan to, to have it in, I know that you can't comment on specific cloud providers, but any general plans that you have uh, to expand it with, with more cloud providers, like, um, uh, I guess you touched on uh, in the previous question, but like, uh, like in general, how, how, like the strategies that you would like to get more developers on your platform. Right. So I think uh, obviously, you know, there is the uh, the Voyager cluster is also uh, one of the areas where a lot of collaboration can happen with uh, university and research community. So that's also open for folks to come in and work on. For commercial, obviously, you know, you know, it's basically through uh, AWS or or through the on-premise systems that uh, Supermicro provides. So that's like in terms of access to hardware, and uh, we're you know we'll we'll have uh, you know. A lot of work in terms of you know um, hackathons and and workshops and, and that we will facilitate so that we'll have more more of the developers being able to engage and, and build out applications and solutions with Gaudi. Um, hopefully, you know you can you can reach again. Like I said, I cannot comment on the on the plans of other cloud service providers, so you should reach out to them directly to uh, get get the plans uh, that they have. Okay, sure. Great, thank you very much, uh, Shuri. Um, 
you could continue chatting and answering questions on Hugo app. Uh, uh, we have to close the session, the live session now. Uh, thank, thank you, you again. So much. Thank you so much for having me.